Hey guys, uh, so I just wanted to give you guys a quick update, um, as far as what's going on. Um, I was downtown today because, um, I, when I finished filling out the visa application online, um, I made an appointment to, um, Wow, sorry guys, I'm really stuttering today, I apologize about that. Um, so when I finished filling out the visa application, I went ahead and paid the fee for it, and um, then I made an appointment to go downtown, and that was today, and that was to get my fingerprints taken and, my, um, and the picture taken. And so that's going to be for the actual visa when that gets processed and stuff. So it was kind of cool. Went down to the federal building downtown and it was right on the first floor. I was in and out of there in like no time. I didn't even like calculate myself. Of course, I couldn't have my phone with me because, you know, it's the same deal as when it was being held in England was because... You know, they don't want you recording things in there in the government building and all that. And so I thought that was kind of interesting. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I sat down. I thought it was kind of funny. They gave me a little tab. I don't know, like, if you guys go to, like, a deli or any store where, you, like, you deal with, like, meats and, you know, you have, like, maybe multiple customers waiting, and, uh, you had, you're given the number, well, it was on, like, the same kind of material that you usually get when you go to the deli, and, uh, I was number eight, and I was actually seen second in line when I got in there, so I thought that was pretty cool. So, it went really fast, it went really quick, and the gal who did my fingerprints and picture, she actually, because if you guys remember, back when I was um, held overnight in uh, in England, in London, um, they were having issues taking my fingerprints, and she said, because she started to do it, and then she's like, oh, we're not getting quite a good reading, put some lotion, you know, she gave me some lotion, she said, put this on your fingertips, and rub them rub it into them really hard because apparently that helps dry out the the whorls and the the ridges and stuff so apparently I have really thin fine fingerprint fingerprints you know so anyway so I did that and we got it working and um then she just she just stamped the stamped my uh I had to print out the confirmation that I'd filled out the visa thing and a confirmation for the appointment and everything. And so she stamped that and wrote something on it. And then she's like, yep, go ahead and send in your information and we'll send out the, we'll send out the, the stuff to the fingerprints and your biometrics to the same agency. And so now it's at the, last step which is to uh which is to get that sent over there and to get it processed um i kind of worry that i'm printing out like that i'm going to include too many things but it's like at the same time i haven't really been told okay you need this you know it's like I mean, even looking online and stuff, it's like, these are some documents you may want to include. And it's like, being that, you know, kind of going off of the letter that they gave me um, when I was denied entry the first time. And, you know, stuff that I've heard from other people, it's like, it's like, you know, I want to print out a, my bank statement. I... Um, printed out pay stubs from 
the one job that I have. I haven't started the started the job that I would have been there yet, but I have my orientation tomorrow, which um will be good. I'll go in there finish filling out whatever paperwork I need to and I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna want me to do. You know, I have no idea. I have no idea if it'll be like me shadowing with somebody or if it'll be just throwing me in the booth. I have no idea. So I guess we'll find out tomorrow. Um, so other than that, um, but yeah, so things are slowly but surely coming together and I just hope and pray that, um, you know, if there are any more bumps in the road that they aren't really that bumpy. Um, the other thing that, well, I was talking to my mom about earlier when I got back and was letting her know everything that happened. Um, you guys noticed, but a lot of my videos, I am not wearing my glasses. And that's because I've had these glasses for like over 10 years. Matter of fact, they're probably going close on 20 years. And I really need to get my eyes checked. But when you work part-time retail, you run into two issues. And one issue is, you know, I mean, because eyeglasses and going to the eye doctor, that's expensive. And this last time I applied for health insurance, I couldn't find anything. Usually, on like the temporary health insurance policies, they have a section where you can apply for either a small dental or a small vision or both. I couldn't find anything like that. So, I just honestly don't know. I don't know what to tell you about that. But anyway, I really need to get my get my eyes checked. So hopefully, with this next job starting up pretty soon, and my parents might even be helping me out a little bit. Um, I might be able to go get my go get my eyes checked. The only problem is I have no idea where to go. I mean, I don't even know if the the eye doctor that I went to see back when I was a kid is even still doing it, so. Um, but yeah, so basically I'm just, I'm not really sure. But there again, you know, another twist in the path. Another, another, hmm, what should I do about this kind of thing? Because it's something that's going to be needed to be addressed at some point, and I just don't want my eyes to steadily get worse and worse and not get checked, so. Anyway, um, let's see what else. Yeah, so I gotta get my eyes checked. I gotta make sure I have everything printed out and get ready to send everything in to the New York processing uh, visa processing place, and, um, you know, and that's the other thing, I'm not really sure, like, because there are some changes, and there will be some changes to my application, I have up to, I have up to two weeks from today to send, to mail everything in, and I also have to pay for a, um, for a, a return label and everything, because, you know, of course, they have to make you pay for your own, I mean, uh, put in enough money on this, but, you know, hopefully the label doesn't cost that awful much. Um, but yeah, so, there's that. And, um, but like I was saying, I don't know if I need to write like a a letter or if I can just cross out and put down, you know, changes that have happened or 
if I need to. Like, I know I need to change my travel date because it was originally going to be July 31st, and now it's been changed to September 14th, which that's the, uh, the other thing that was driving me crazy. Because um, originally, it was supposed to be uh, my friend... Uh, my friend who lives in England, um, not Keith, but one of Keith's friends and his wife, uh, they were going to pay the, and they did, they did pay for the tickets for the original date of July 31st, and then with everything that's been going on, and with me getting a job, and getting another job and everything, trying to decide what I want to do, I've been like, you know, I got on with her, got on with, uh, got on with Nikki, and was like, so, here's the situation, I'm gonna need to change the date, what do we do, and she tried, apparently tried calling the, the site where she'd originally gotten the ticket from, and I don't know if she had problems, I don't know if it was... It was weird because the price that they quoted her was like eight hundred some eight hundred like thirty eight something, and but then I called like the very next day, and the gentleman that I spoke to quoted me a price of four hundred and fifty, and so and but it was weird because he said, "Oh, it's just for today, and let me go ahead and get this." And, you know, I didn't really feel pressured or anything, but at the same time, it was like, it was like, I want to get these tickets, you know. I want to get, you know, because I think middle September is going to be a lot better for me because I'll be a lot more prepared. And there'll be more of a chance of me not being caught off guard and if something were to happen and I wouldn't get my wouldn't get my visa right away or whatever, you know, that would give me enough time. And also, hopefully, it would give me enough time to save up some money, some more money and stuff. So, yeah. I don't know, I'm still a little bit frustrated about it, because I don't... And again, I don't know what they... exactly what they told her. I don't know why she didn't... You know, she just said that mine was kind of tight at the moment, and I totally understand that. I'm just kind of like, I'm just a little confused because, like I said, she was the one who originally paid for my ticket, which was supposed to be me leaving July 31st, and she's not going to get any of her money back, which I think is weird. Unless she's talking to them, you know. I mean, we changed the date. Everything's fine and all that. But I ended up having to pay for the ticket. And like I said, that's fine. I would honestly rather, you know, even think back, I would have honestly rather taken care of it, you know, rather than be like, well, do we wait, do we, you know, so, I don't know, and a lot of that is me, a lot of that is my feelings inside, and just kind of feeling like, uh, you know, that's just my main deal with this whole thing, is I'm just very emotional, and it's very unsure of myself. I mean, even today, even when I left, like, the federal building after getting done with, done with everything, and it was just like, I was wanting to turn back and say, you sure I don't need to take anything else with me, you know? I thought they would, they would have given me, like, a slip of paper or something that said, hey, you, you know, or something. I don't know. I mean, they stamped my... This is a copy of my confirmation, and they stamped it and everything. So, I mean, I'm 
positives, I'm good, but it's just, I don't know any of this stuff. I've never had to deal with any of this before, and so it's just, it's insane, and I've been stressed out because I'm only working, I mean, as right now, I'm only working one job. Now, that will change, but even starting tomorrow, but even once I start working at Iowa Event Center, it's going to take a while for me to get my, to get my first check, and yeah, you know, and they got to get me on the schedule, and they got, you know, all that and that's fine. I'm willing to, you know, deal with all this stuff. That's a-okay. It's just, it's a little bit frustrating because I'm just kind of like, I don't even, you know, it's like, I've never dealt with any of this stuff before. And then just like, oh, it can be quite aggravating. And, you know, for somebody who still struggles with self-image and still struggles with feeling stupid because I don't know how things are supposed to work, this whole situation is just, like, me dealing with one of my biggest fears. And I'm, and thankfully, you know, it's, it's, going okay, thankfully. I mean, I fully believe God's in control, and I fully believe that he's guided me through all this, and that he's helping, you know, and that he's, he's yes, you want to go here, or you want to do this, or whatever. You know, and I've also learned to listen to my inner voice, you know, listen to the small little voice inside my head that is just like, not the one that plays the bad tapes, but the one that says, hey, you know, you need to do this because this will, you know, this will help you and stuff. And it's been a good learning experience. I will say that. I'll say this whole thing has been frustrating and annoying, but it's been a very good learning experience. And so... Like, it's also kind of frustrating because I've had to deal with my parents because I'm still living with them, and it's like with everything that the whole family's gone through, with everything that my sister's going through, and it's just frustrating because it's like, I don't even know what's, you know... And, you know, I get, I still feel like there's times I get treated like, I feel like I have to have my door closed because I have to be careful, you know, because they don't know that I have a YouTube channel. And they would probably freak out if they knew because they still have that concept of the internet is full of scary bad people. And I get that. I get that there's weirdos on the internet. I get that there's bad people on the internet. But I've done my best trying to stay away from that kind of stuff. I don't go on websites that are about, you know, weird things. I don't, you know, stuff like that. So... I don't know. I'm kind of feeling bad because I feel like I should go out and take a walk. That's since I didn't yesterday, but at the same time, it's raining out there. Or it's kind of raining on and off throughout the day. And I really... I don't mind being on the occasional shower, but I really don't want to be out and walking in the rain. And it's times like these, I wish we hadn't gotten rid of our treadmill. <laughs> because, yeah, I could really use something to, you know, walk on and, you know, listen to music while I work out or whatever. 
but you know, K Sarah Sarah, right? Um, you gotta deal with the hand you've been given. But yes, that's why I'm taking the time now to record this video because, you know, because I'm alone in the house. Everybody else is gone. Dad's got my niece. He's out entertaining her and all that. And Mom, well, she went out to get her a haircut, but she must have gone out to do other things too because that was like a few hours ago. But anyway, so... I'm going to keep this short. It's already at 20 minutes, and I'm sure you guys probably like wrapped up, Julie. Come on. Keep it short. I know. And I promise another gameplay video is coming. Um, Probably keep going with the Nancy Drew Ghost of Thorn Hall, although I might. There's also been a little bit of drama going on with uh both of the Minecraft multiplayer servers that I've been on. And so I'm now at a, I'm now on another one, which has a lot of people who were apparently fired and or let go from the first, not the World Busca server, but the server that one of the players who was on World Busca told me about and said, hey, I've got a server that, that, that you know, come on and check it out. So I did, and it was fun. They had townie, they had factions, they had all that, and it was in the process of being worked on. Well, something apparently happened. I have no idea what, but major descent in ranks or whatever, and so a lot of the people from there were fired, and so they now have a server, or they have a, they had a server, but. I don't know. That's the other thing. I'm just totally confused about what's going on there. But anyway, so suffice it to say, I'm now on that server. And it's really cool because they have the survival multiplayer, which I've seen a lot of Let's Plays on on YouTube. And I've seen a lot of people have a lot of fun with. So... We'll give that a try, and I'll probably upload some footage of that, too. The fun part about survival is there's not a safe place. So it's basically like going on survival single player. Like, they have, uh, they have like, a, a spawn, which is safe and there's no like mobs within a certain radius of it but the other thing but you know it's like once you get out into the world it's like survival single player you have to chop down trees you have to make your house you have to find coal so you can get torches and light up the place otherwise you know you got mobs spawning all over the place. And so, so I made myself a house, two-story, and put torches, you know, even up on the roof, because I've had, like, spiders spawn up there, and that is the creepiest sound in the history of Minecraft. And that includes gas, by the way. Although gas kind of in a really close second as to very creepy, disturbing noises that you probably don't want to hear right next to. So, oh, that's the other thing. That was a r really cool thing. So, on the World Busca server, I found an abandoned mine shaft. And I was wandering around exploring and setting torches. All of a sudden I hear, shh, you know, the, the noise that means that there are spiders. So, I figure there's a spider spawner, like, right around that corner. So I back up. I'm not going in there, you know, because at this point, I don't, I have armor, but none of it's enchanted. I don't have enchanted sword. I just have an iron sword. So I went back home. I made myself a diamond sword, and I 
went fishing to boost up my, because fishing will boost up your, um, your levels. And I'm fishing, and I catch an enchanted book that has Bane of Arthropods 4 on it, which is one of the higher enchants of, like, if you hit a spider with the Bane of Arthropod sword, it will burst into flame. Flame, and kind of like instantly die. So, I liked that. I was like, yes, you know. So, I managed to get up enough. I uh, managed to get to like level 7, and I used the enchanting book on my anvil with my sword, and I got the Bane of Arthropods. So, and which was really cool because more than half the time the anvils in the World Buster server don't work. So I was really nervous. I was like, don't let me lose this book. I do not want to lose this book. And it worked. Of course, now, see, my problem is I got out of there so fast. I got out of the mine shaft so fast. I didn't write down the coordinates. I have no idea where it is. So I can't find it. So that's going to be my next little venture when I log back in the world of So now that I have my Bane of Arthrod sword, I can uh, go take care of that. Uh, so anyway, and I'll pro what I'll probably end up doing, especially since in World Buskets, mobs are for the most part turned off, except for in the case of spawners. Which, in my mind, that does make a whole lot of sense, because it's supposed to reduce lag, but you would think spawners, where you get multiples of the same kind of boss coming out, you would think that would cause some serious lag, but maybe it's so spread out and it only happens every once in a while that it's not that big of a deal. I don't know. But, so anyway. But yeah, so now I have my Bane of Arthropod sword. I can... And if I can find where the, where the, um, where the mine shaft is, then I can go back in and deactivate that. Because you can either destroy it with a pickaxe, but what I thought I would do, especially since, you know, some people, like, do what we call, what's called grinding, which is basically, you know, you set up a spawner or whatever, or you do like a mob grinding thing where you set up something where like multiple mobs will come at you and they'll get caught in something and they'll die and they'll give up their, you know, zombie flesh, their zombie bones if they're a skeleton, that kind of thing. So... And I don't know how to set up anything like that. i totally clueless. But, um, so I figured something like that would work fairly well. So if I just deactivate it, which I deactivate it by setting a torch right on top of the spawner. That way, if I or if anybody else wants to go down and kill some, kill some spiders to gain some XP... There you go, you can do that. And then all I have to do is clear out how many spiders are in the, in whatever room it is. So, and the other really cool thing is normally in rooms like that, where there's like a spawner, there'll be chests, and there'll be chests with loot in them. And so I'm curious to see what kind of loot we've got. So... Anyway, guys, it's going on 29 minutes and 18 seconds, so I will let you guys go. I just wanted to give you a quick update on what was going on. Um, I have orientation tomorrow for my job working at the Iowa Event Center. I don't know how long it's going to last, but apparently I do get paid for it, so that is a good thing. And I assume I'll get, like, the tour, you know, I don't know if they have, like, a break room... I'll assume they have something like that anyway. And, um, but yeah, and I'll get more details as to what the job 
misspelled. I know pretty much the basics, but I mean, I don't know a lot of things about it, you know. I don't know if I can, like, keep things with me in the booth, like if I can read in the booth when there's, when there's, you know, nobody around to sell tickets to or whatever, or what the deal is, but we'll find all that out tomorrow. So, and I may post another video tomorrow and let you guys know. So, anyway, I hope you guys, um, had a great weekend, and, um, I will talk to you probably sometime this week, hopefully with a gameplay video. Anyway, have a great Monday, you guys, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.